This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. It was a successful family night weekend as far as this football game on Saturday night as the Bison's victorious 47 to 21 in the football game on Saturday night. And coach, uh, great atmosphere as your football team coming in for the walk of brothers and uh, just nothing like being at home on a Saturday night at, at Harding. At parents weekend or family weekend, Billy is always huge for us. Uh, I think we touched on it last week. Some of our guys, that, that might be the only time that their parents get to come watch them play. I know we had guys like Michael Latu, who's from the West Coast, and uh, uh, Cameron Moody, you know, who's one of our, our guys that's uh, red shirting this year. Their parents were in, and, and uh, you know, it was great to see them getting to interact with their folks, and their folks seeing Harding for the first time, and you know, the beauty of this campus, and, and just the general atmosphere. You know, we got a lot of, uh, Good vibes on campus during this time of the year, and uh, it's great to be able to play a home football game, too. You mentioned Michael Latu and having the family here, and he responded with a big game, uh, 95 yards rushing and a big rushing attack for your football team on Saturday night. He did, and you know, the last two weeks we've been able to really get the beat backs going, which is, which is huge for us. It's a big part of our offense, and, and Michael has been a big part of that. He's been very productive the last two weeks. And uh, you know we are looking forward to, to he and our other beatbacks all uh, you know continuing to improve and, and making making that a real viable part of our triple option attack. The excitement in that locker room. What was it like after the football game to get to four and zero? That's pretty special. Uh, I, I think it it was mixed. Uh, you know the excitement of winning the game against UAM was obviously a big deal. But I think also at the same time, these guys are already thinking about, you know, next week, next Saturday. And, uh, you know, the game that we're going to play against OBU, who, who is a big rival of ours. Uh, you know, it's, it's a rivalry based on mutual respect. But also the fact that it's going to be televised and, and all the things that go along with that. So uh, that to me, that was kind of the, the mixed atmosphere. Uh, Yes, great job. We got a great victory. We we accomplished a lot, but okay, we're we're ready to move on. Washita Baptist this Saturday. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the show. It'll be the twelfth ranked Bisons against the twenty fourth ranked Tigers on Saturday at the fifty seventh meeting. But we have a lot of highlights to get to first. We'll look back at the UAM highlights starting with first half highlights right after this. Hey, it's Ava, and this is Tess from Vivo's Do Your Selfie, where we recreate the hottest looks from today's biggest music videos. After cleaning out our closet, we have a lot of clothes we don't wear anymore. Like this old t-shirt. It's not garbage, it's actually a brand new rug. And to make it, all you need to do is cut, tie, and glue. Cut the t-shirt into strips. Tie the strips into knots. And glue the knots to the bath mat. I love it. Give your garbage another life. And recycle. I never felt all that special. But in the wake of an earthquake, we can all do something. When donating goods, it's hard to know what's needed. So now it's my turn to help. Aid workers can spend me locally where I can help save lives. Someone is doing better because of me. Together, we made that happen. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bison's 47-21, the victory on Saturday night against UAM. And Coach, we get sent to look at first-half highlights. And it was really, I think, a, a physical football game. It looked like uh, from up top watching, watching the football game. And uh, the two defenses really got after each other. And your defense on the football field here, field here to start. They did. And, you know, these guys uh, had come off a, a great performance against Arkansas Tech, you know, one of the best teams in our conference the past week. A barn burner down there in Monticello. Uh, to me, this is Coach Jackson's most talented team that he's had since he's been down there. Uh, really strong on the O-line and D-line. Uh, a lot of speed defensively. Uh, and you can see us running the the pitch phase of the triple right there, getting the ball to Zach Shelley. Great job by Park reading that. Zach and had a big game on Saturday. Zach night. had a huge game. Zach did exactly what we needed him to do. And you can see our defense swarming right there. 
and that was pretty indicative of the way we played the whole first half. Uh, you know, Jamie McGee is one of the best kickers in yes. our league. We had, great, miss. we had great pressure on him right there. I believe that's what caused that miss, and that's a tribute to our guys. You come back and throw the play action to Andrew Dather, and boy, he was one step away from being able to kick through that tackle and take it to the house. A lot of feeling out in this game. That's the that's the counter trap uh, to Matt Tennyson. Great blocking up front. We can come back and run the triple again. We get the ball pitched. Uh, you know, love the way Zach finishes off his runs. Yeah, he he is going to try to punish the defender, and he did a great job right there. Another trap to Matt. We kind of had that phase of our game going and uh, we were able to convert the field goal after two attempts. One of them, we, you know, we, we got penalized on up for a false start on that one. Low scoring game, three nothing Bisons as we head to the second quarter. Yeah, a lot of feeling out yeah. as far as, uh, especially our offense versus their defense. I said this in the post game interview that, you know, they gave us a different look than they had and it took us a little while to draw a bead on them. And in the meantime, our defense was playing fantastic football, uh, giving us short fields, uh, give us, giving us an opportunity to uh, uh, convert some field goal attempts that we missed. But here we go again, getting the option going. Eric Kelly out in front with a great block, and Eric blocked fantastic for us all night long. He really had a great game, too. This is Park on the second phase of the triple. He takes it into the end zone, uh, and uh, here we go. A little bit of a mishandled snap, and uh, you know, for a second there, I thought Cole was going to make something happen with that, but they were able to stop us, and so we're up 9 nothing. This was a huge fourth down. Uh, defense rose up, stopped them in this situation, and uh, were able to give the ball back to us with uh, possession on, the, you know, on their side of the 50-yard line, which was huge. As I said, our defense was fantastic in the first half. You know, we did not give those guys anything. We come back and throw play action, and Park really fits that ball into a tight window to Eric Kelly. Uh, as I said, Eric had a really good football game. Uh, this one we, we missed. Uh, as I said, this was one of those that we were we're disappointed, but we're committed to going back to work for that. And there's Trayvon Bigelow. I think that's got to be the big hit of the week. No the question conference. about it. That was a big play of the game for us on defense. And, uh, you know, uh, Trayvon's first sack of the year and also a cause fumble. And four sacks for your defense in right. the football game on Saturday. Right. We were able to get a lot of pressure on them. And I know that this was the frustrating part of the first half, getting in the red zone and, and not being able getting to convert. points there are two different Yeah, times. you know, we hooked, uh, Tristan hooked the first one, and in that one he probably overcompensated a little bit and then left it out to the right. Uh, but Tristan is a very talented kicker. We're working on all phases of that, the, the snap, the hold, and the kick, yeah. and uh, you know, we're going to continue to improve. Great uh, interception and return by Corey Bassett. There's the trap play again, and uh, there's Michael Latu. And one of his carries for the night. We run the option back to the short side of trips, get the ball to Zach Shelley. Got good blocking out front. And now we're sprinting out. Get the ball to Andrew Dather. Good job by Park. Got the ball inside the 20, and we were able to convert on this one. And uh, that was a great way to finish the first half. Yeah, at halftime, the Bisons. Uh, leading 12 nothing at the half, and uh, we had a chance to hear your uh, halftime interview coach, uh, Abby Loring, was downstairs right. and did a great job in interviewing you before you went into the locker room and in listening to you from upstairs on the live broadcast. I heard the optimism in your voice, and I, I, I thought that maybe that was two reasons. You're up 12 nothing. obviously. You just scored right before the half going into the locker room, and your defense had played so well in the first half. That's exactly right, Billy. You know, uh, I don't know what everybody else's expectations were, but I can tell you right now, we expected to get UAM's best shot, and that's exactly what we got. We knew they would be prepared. We felt all along that, that talent-wise, this was a really good defensive football team. I knew they had weapons on offense. And uh, for us to take a 12 to nothing lead in at halftime, and also, as I, as I told you earlier, I had the feeling that we had drawn a bead on them offensively, that we 
we had figured out what we needed to do, the plays that we needed to run, how we needed to execute them. Went inside at halftime, and our coaches made some great adjustments. And uh, and additionally, we were playing great defense. You know, we were getting the ball back. We were set up in with great field position. And uh, so as we went in at halftime, I did have a good feeling. I felt like we were going to come out and play very well, and we it, consequently we had a great third quarter. And we're going to see third quarter highlights in just a moment, but to, to kind of look ahead to the third quarter, Coach, uh, that was really the difference in the football game was, was the third quarter dominance from your football team. It was, and uh, we started the, the quarter off in a great way with a, with a super kickoff return, our best of the year so far, and then we just continued from there. All right, we'll see that kickoff return from Zach Shelley when we come out of the timeout as the Bison's at the half at this point in our highlights lead 12-0. We'll come back with second half highlights right after this. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The 12th ranked Bisons at the half leading UAM by a score of 12 nothing. Coaches, we turn and look at third quarter highlights and we talked before the break about the exciting kickoff return from Zach Shelley uh, to really get that second half started and it, it really gave your football team a good feeling, I know, uh, beginning that series. It was just what we need, Billy. And you know, there's some great blocking up there. You can see Eric Simmons. You can see Jonathan Coleman with a wall block right there. Look at the way Zach is, is the de determined way that he hit that thing and is running the football. We get the ball inside the 20, and we come out, run the midline option, and score on the first play. And uh, you could not have asked for a better start to the second quarter. Park I'm sorry, his, the second half. Park with his second of four rushing touchdowns in the football game right there. Another. Another sack by Madison Furman. Great pressure by our D-line. And, uh, you know, Hunter Leopard is a guy, I talked about it last week, a guy to have a, a lot of respect for. Uh, you know, he's had some injuries since he's been at UAM. And, you know, we hammered him pretty good the other night, and he hung right in there and stayed with it and uh, did a great job for them. This is the double option. We've got great blocking out in front of Eric Kelly and a great job by Eric on finishing that run. We come back, we throw the play action, and, and what a catch by Andrew. Yeah, that's a yeah. highlight reel catch. Yeah, ball was a little high, and he stuck that paw up there and got it in, and, and uh, you know we end up with the ball on the five-yard line. We come back and run the quarterback sneak, and you can see the surge by our offensive line right there. Park gets behind him, and uh, here we go again. Another touchdown for the Bisons, mm -hmm. and that, that, was, that was a big deal for us. More pressure right there. You can see DeAndre McCarthy. Uh, who's a true freshman for us getting involved in that sack. Uh, there's the off tackle play with Michael Latu. You can see Michael running through tackles as he does so well. Uh, Michael again. Love the way he's finishing those runs off. That's one of the things that I've noticed, Coach, is that he does. He runs so hard and he is difficult to tackle. He is, and uh, we come back after establishing the fullback a little bit and we run the midline and and Park takes it in for another touchdown, number three for him. Yeah, Park had four touchdowns on the night, and, and Coach, uh, that's the first time we see this long touchdown for uh, UAM, but uh, the first time in Harding history that uh, the Bisons have had someone rush for at least three touchdowns uh, in a game, in three different games in a season. Right. You know, that uh, Tony Beckton was the defender on that long play, and he was in really good position right there. They, the quarterback made a great throw, and the, the uh, receiver did a great job of, of getting that ball and then taking it down the sideline. We come back, run the wheel route. This is to Eric Kelly. 
uh, for a touchdown, and man, Eric had a great night for us. That was the week on off. The coaches consider that the big play of the game on offense. Well, it was executed so well. It, it was. And, uh, great strip. That's DeAndre McCarthy again. And uh, causing that turnover. True freshman from Winsboro, Louisiana. And uh, really proud of DeAndre and the, the plays that he's been able to make for us. Come back and run the midline again. They knocked the ball out of Park's hands. Uh, fortunately for us, we were able to get it back. And you had to give UAM a lot of credit. They never quit in the second half. They did. They they really uh, showed me something. They they played hard, and uh, like I said, I think they got a good defense. And I, I was really proud of our guys and the way we were able to kind of uh, work until we found some stuff that was working and then capitalize on it. Here's a great catch from Zach Shelley. Yeah, Park had a lot of pressure on that play, and he was able to get it off. And Zach tracked that ball down and made a great catch. Come back. Again, hand the ball off to Michael. That's the trap play again. Love the way he continues to fight for yardage. And we hand it off to him, let him finish that thing off. I think that was our last touchdown. And we're going to see uh, one final interception right here from Becton. Coach. Yeah, this is Tony Becton. I think that's number two for Tony on the year. And uh, boy, I'm proud to see that for him. And it's always fun to walk across the field and, and uh, shake the opposing coach's hand when you've been the victor. Uh, you know, it's, I was talking to my coaches this morning after 30 years. Uh, of coaching here at Harding, you know, there have not been a whole bunch of times that we've started 4-0. We've had some good years recently, uh, but it makes you appreciate every single win, and it makes you appreciate all the guys that have come before that have uh, bled and sweated out on that practice field and, and, you know, played their guts out on game day, and sometimes we were not fortunate enough to win. And uh, it, I, I just wanted to call our attention to how fortunate we are to be where we are right now and to be able to coach the kids that we're coaching, to work together as coaches, and to be experiencing the success that we are. It's not guaranteed. You know, you got to earn it every single week, and we will certainly have to earn it this coming week. But uh, I'm just very appreciative for, for, of where we are right now. Let's talk about Park Parrish, the four rushing touchdowns. He also threw for a touchdown in the football game. He has 11 rushing touchdowns now on the season. That leads uh, Division Two, and the Harding record is 17 from a guy by the name of Snake Dixon that everybody knows right. in 1972. Uh, Snake was a uh, senior when I was a freshman at Harding in 1973. Those guys were coming off a 10 in one year, a big Cowboy Bowl victory. And you know, interestingly enough, we were running the full house wishbone triple option at that time. It's funny how uh, you know football is very cyclical and things that, that were once considered ancient are now uh, in vogue again. And uh, yeah, Snake was a, was a great football player for Harding, and we had a lot of really good football players on our team at that time. And uh, I think it's just an indication of what we talked about before the season started, that we felt like for the first time in a long time, we have the threat at quarterback that can uh, you know, make the defenses play us honest as far as that phase of the triple option. Uh, and Park is different. You know, we had a really good running quarterback in Kelvin Martin in 2012. Kelvin was kind of like a fast fullback, you know. Uh, he would get into the secondary, and I mean, he would find hunt somebody down to run over, and, and he did it a lot, and he, he did have great speed. Uh, Park is a little bit more shifty, and uh, when he gets in the secondary, he has the ability to, to make some guys miss, and, and uh, he's been doing that. And for us, you know, those 11 touchdowns have been big. You mentioned the threat throwing the football, 186 yards throwing the football, and we saw the catch from Andrew Dather. Dather wound up with um, 82 yards uh, in receiving. What a, what a start to the season for that sophomore. And I also need to mention that Park Parrish uh, was co-offensive player of the week in the Great American Conference for this week. Right. Uh, our passing game has improved. And uh, an indication the other night was that we were able to spread the ball around to Dather, and then you know Eric Kelly had two big catches for us. And then Zach Shelley had a big catch right. on third and long to sustain a drive. Uh, we have some other receivers that are that are dangerous guys too. And and you know it's just the way it has worked out to this point. We've uh, kind of focused on Andrew. Uh, 
But as I said a couple of weeks ago, I, you know, those guys, uh, you know, their day's coming. And uh, uh, it's, we are fortunate to have that many weapons in the passing game, and Park's doing a great job of getting the ball to them. And I don't want to overlook the time of possession, Stan. I know that's very important, particularly when you win a football game. You had the football almost 41 minutes in the contest on Saturday night. I did not realize that till after the game. Uh, I, I didn't realize there was that big of a discrepancy. But uh, we were able to sustain drives. And, you know, against SAU, we scored quickly on several of our uh, possessions, uh, even running the football. You know, we had some long runs where we scored. Or, you know, I, I remember uh, very clearly, you know, we had the ball in possession one time on the six yard line, and it took us four plays to score, four running plays. Uh, these guys were making us kind of go the hard way a little bit, and we were not having the explosive plays uh, in the run game that we had had in previous weeks. So I think maybe that had something to do with it. What was the key to the defense's success? And I say that thir three of 11 for UAM on third down. I thought that was a key stat, and also to be able to put pressure on Leopard throughout the evening. Right, and, and another stat that goes along with that is, you know, we got four turnovers and we did not turn the ball right. over. So we were plus four turnover ratio, which is a telling stat in any football game. Uh, I think our defense is growing week to week. Uh, you know, we have played a lot of young players on defense this year. We did have some returners, but we've had some young players, especially in the secondary, that have had to come in and, and be first time starters. Uh, and I, I really think that we're just kind of starting to come together with that group. And uh, the first half, if we can continue to play that way, we're going to uh, have a lot of success on defense the rest of this year. So the Bison's victorious on Saturday night and uh, look forward to the football game this week against Washita Baptist. We will talk about that. We'll also hear uh, from three different Bison's after the football game on Saturday night after this break, along with a question for Coach. And we'll get to that right after this. This is why you took a second job. Why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. Why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable, a free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Call 888-995-HOPE today. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We get to hear from some Bison players after the football game. Madison Furman, Zach Shelley, and uh, Park Parrish. We'll hear from them right now. It really makes a difference when you have Trayvon Bigelow on the left side, uh, keeping the quarterback from escaping anywhere. Uh, the quarterback was just sitting there, and I was able to turn the corner pretty fast and get to him. Um, interior pressure also helped a lot, keeping him from escaping. He didn't have anywhere to really step up to and I was able to beat my guy on the right side. I saw a lot of uh, downhill um, inside zone, and uh, then they started throwing a lot. But a uh, pretty big O-line, and that, that's always something to, to deal with. I got the ball, and then I saw Eric Simmons block his guy out. I mean, everyone blocked their guy great, and then the hole just opened up. It was Brian or Brandon Gates and then Eric Simmons, and they just blocked their guys, and I just hit the hole. I mean, anyone could hit that hole. It was pretty big, so credit to those guys. Park just threw it, and I just went up and – Went up and got it. It was a pretty good throw. So I don't think Park saw it. Uh, so oh, I, I thought, so your catch was well. I just saw the ball in the air and I caught it. I think our offensive line did a great job of just pushing up front. Um, credit to UAM, uh, they had some athletes over there, uh, so they gave us a little trouble early. Uh, but our offensive line did their thing. They just you know kept grinding uh, throughout the game. Just eventually wore them down. Uh, and so you know. Run, 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 hit them with the play action. Um, that's, that's one good thing about our offense is uh, that, that play action can catch them off guard. Um, and so our offensive line just pounding them and then being able to you know, occasionally get that uh, play action game was really a key part of our offense tonight. What do you attribute the 28-point third quarter to? Uh, you know, I think our mindset kind of changed at halftime. Uh, we went in with a 
kind of a sour taste in our mouth. We kind of got shut down in the first half. Um, they came out hot, ready to play, um, kind of had us on our heels, honestly. And, um, you know, we went in the locker room, we talked it over, um, made it our adjustments. Um, we got in the right plays and, and then just rolled from there. That was fun to watch uh, Zach Shelley's response to that question, mm -hmm. Coach, because Park Parish uh, had been hit, I think, on right. that play and was, was laying down yeah. uh, when, when Zach caught it. You enjoy seeing your kids talk about the football game, and, and I know you're so proud of them after uh, the football game, the way they represent the university. I, I do enjoy that, and, and you hit the nail on the head. It's because we have great kids that I'm really proud of, uh, proud to be associated with them. And, uh, you know, I get to see these guys every day, and, uh, you know, sometimes the perception of football players nationwide is, is uh, not good sometimes. Uh, but, you know, we have some wonderful, wonderful young men on our football team that are very servant-oriented. Uh, you know, they do things all the time that nobody knows about, and that's the way it should be. Uh, but, yes, I'm proud of them. I love them and uh, feel very blessed to get to work with them every day. We just had an opportunity to see the Bison players answering questions, and now we'll get to put Coach on the spot as he gets this week's question. Hey Coach Huckabee, my name is Jacob McCall from Los Angeles, California, and my question for you is, what's your single biggest challenge being the coach of the Harding Bison? Thank you for that question, Jacob. I'm always impressed by the questions that our students ask us, uh, Billy, very insightful young men and women. The hardest part of my job is managing the scholarship money. Uh, we have 36 scholarships, and for those of you that don't know, we have over 130 on our football team, and it doesn't take a math genius to figure out that you, you know that doesn't stretch out. Uh, in Division One, you have 85 scholarships. In Division One FCS, you have 65, and you can split those in such a way that you can get up to about 85 as far as the equivalencies, equivalencies are concerned. For us, uh, it means that the vast majority of our young men are are uh, investing in their education, them and their parents. And, uh, you know, we do have guys that are older, that are established players, that are getting larger scholarships, but we have a lot of guys for us that are uh, making big contributions to our football team that are on small scholarships. I'm always going to have a special place in my heart for walk-ons and guys that come in on low scholarships because that's me. Uh, uh, I was not highly recruited out of high school. In fact, I, I think uh, I might have been a mercy walk-on uh, looking back at uh, Looking back at myself, coming out of high school, one day, one day during two days my freshman year, I stepped on the scales and I weighed 152 pounds at the same height I am right now, right under 6'4". So I was, not, uh, I was not someone that the coaches had a lot of confidence in that would end up being a football player. But I stayed with it and stayed with it. And uh, eventually my junior year in the fall, I, I started the last three games. And so in uh, January of my junior year, right before I got married in May, I earned a scholarship. And so I'm always uh, looking at these guys that are trying to work their way up the ladder with, uh, I, I can relate to them. I know how they feel. And uh, so that is the part to me that is the most difficult because if it was up to me, I'd, I'd have them all on a full scholarship. That's not possible, so we have to work with it the best that we can. But I appreciate my coaches. I appreciate the attitude of our players and their parents. And I think they all know that we put a lot of prayer into that and we take it very seriously <clears throat> and it doesn't always it doesn't always work out in a fair way but that that is a uh, that's reality that's what we have to deal with and that is definitely the hardest part and I don't think it's uh, <clears throat> much of an overstatement to talk about this game coming up this week that this is the biggest game in the conference Harding and Washita Baptist two ranked teams, the Bison's number 12 in the nation, number 24, Washita Baptist, 4-0 Harding, 3-1 Washita Baptist. And coach, when we go back and look at the start of this, this conference, throw out uh, the fact that this is the 57th meeting, but just talk about right now, the GAC. To me, this has been by far the most entertaining games over the, the short time of the GAC. There's a, there have been some outstanding football games between these two teams. Well, particularly when you look back at the last two years. You know, we went down there in 2013, got behind, fought our way back, uh, you know, got down to the very last drive and things were not looking good for us and we were able to throw a slant to Donatella Luckett that he took to the house and, 
uh, won the football game for us. And uh, then this past year, we felt like we had the game in control up 28 to 20. They had a tremendous drive, scored on a similar play. You know, uh, they had a pass in the end zone that, that didn't look like it had much chance, but sure enough, they made it. And then they scored the two-point conversion. We go into overtime, and then we get beat by a field goal in overtime. So uh, we have had a we have had a tremendous series with Washington Baptist. Uh, those guys do a great coaching job. They get a ton out of their players, and they have really good players. And uh, so we kind of relate to that. You know, we think uh, that uh, we are sco two schools that uh, approach things in a similar fashion. And uh, we've really enjoyed the, the competition with OBU and, and expect nothing but the same uh, this Saturday. Know that it's going to be two football teams that are going to play extremely hard. They're both going to be well prepared. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. This, to me, is college football at its finest. I know that kids on both sides are going to be so excited to play the football game. It's an early start. It's at 11 a.m. Right. start time. But with the fact that it's early in the season, <laughs> Uh, with a 4-0 team and a 3-1 and team, both nationally ranked, it doesn't get much bigger this early in the season. I, I think that's right. And, uh, you know, the 11 o'clock kickoff is due to the fact that it's being televised. And, uh, you know, of course, that's exciting to both teams and exciting to our fan base. We'll have a lot of people that will be trying to pick that game up, you know, throughout the country that can't, you know, can't make it to the game. And uh, more than likely, I would, I would say, Billy, that that game is going to come down to taking care of the football and being uh, opportunistic when you're in the red zone. Uh, you know, you got to get points and you got to take care of the ball. And uh, I, I expect, as I said earlier, two teams that will play extremely hard on Saturday. All right, Coach, I always enjoy watching the highlights with you and, and looking back to uh, the ball games, especially after a victory. Congratulations on being 4-0. Best of luck this week, and we'll see you again next week. Thanks, Billy. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bison's on the road this week, 11 a.m. start time on Saturday down in Arkadelphia against Washita Baptist. We'll see you next time. This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee.